they're on their way, but you can start with me and get, okay. get me done. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started with Louisville Press Conference. We have head coach Jeff Walls. He'll be joined shortly by Makasa Robinson and Chris Carr. Coach, if you just give us an opening statement, and then we'll take questions. Yeah, you know, first off, I'd just like to congratulate uh, 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 Megan, her staff, and, and Wake Forest. Uh, coming into this, you know, they're, they're 14 and 15, and your backs are against the wall because you, you want to get into po postseason play, and normally you're trying to get to be 500 or better. And pretty impressive what they did in those, two, those first two ball games. Um, and we, we knew coming into the, that, especially after pl playing them there, how hard they compete, they don't quit, that we were going to have to try to continue to, to keep the pressure up and not let them get comfortable so we could wear them down. And I thought we did a really good job, but you got to give them credit. We get up 20-something in the first half, and then it's an 8-0 run in 48 seconds because they, they're not going to quit. And I kept telling them that this team will not quit. Uh, so just really impressed. Jewel Spears is a Jewel Spears a heck of a basketball player. Uh, her and Williams, I thought, just played exceptional today. And it wasn't that we didn't know they were good. Uh, they they made tough shots and competed, and just want to make sure I congratulate them. On our side, I thought for the most part it was one of the most complete games we played. Take that last five minutes, well, last four and a half minutes of the first half out. Um, I thought we got much better. We ended up turning the ball only over 11 times. But again, I think two or three of them were in that stretch where we let them get back in the game. And it's, if we can eliminate those and just eliminate the bonehead decisions, you know, I, I like to say, I mean, just remove your head from your rear end. And if we can do that, then I think we have, we have a chance no matter who we play. Um, and I just enjoyed seeing the joy they had for each other. Uh, we started that second half, and, and Olivia Co uh, Cochran goes on a 6-0 run herself, but Haley sets an unbelievable screen on the sixth point that gets her open, that gets O open. And that's what I just it, – it's fun to watch when they have joy for each other. Haley was shooting lights out there in the first half, and everybody was trying to get her the ball. You know, and that's, that's what you do. That's when you realize – You've got a team that they care about each other and they understand different games are going to present different opportunities. And when someone's hot, get them the ball. It's, you know, it's not real difficult, but sometimes we make it harder than what it is when we try to over, overthink things. But just really, really proud of them. All right, we'll open it up for questions now. If you have a question, raise your hand. We'll get the microphone to you. If you're on Zoom, please use the raise your hand function. We'll get to you if time permits. Here in the front row. Coach Essex Thayer, Deacons Daily on SI.com. Uh, was, was it a concerted part of your game plan to uh, shut down Jewel Spear? It looked like you guys were face guarding her to open the game, just trying to shut her down. Well, I, personally, and, I, and I'm, I'm not attacking anybody because I think it's great, but I, I think we've got the best defensive player in this league. Uh, I, I've, I've never coached a kid like, like Mikasa here that can guard the one through the five. It does not matter. You know, her sophomore year, we're playing in the Elite Eight game against Stanford, and she's guarding their five players. It just doesn't matter. Then she, we, we knew, hey, she's our best defender. We're going to have to put her on spear. And I thought she did a really, really good job of trying to frustrate her, trying to make her work. And she, and she made a few tough shots. Uh, but I, I think it eventually wore her down and that's what we, we had to do. Because at their, at their place, she kicked our rear. I mean, she's a special player, and she absolutely took it to us. And we were just like, okay, if, if they're going to beat us, we can't let her do it. Okay, go ahead here in the front row. Coach Les Johns with 24-7 Sports. Um, just curious, the, the result in Winston-Salem earlier this year, was that something that kind of motivated and kept your, guy, kept your team focused this week heading into this game? Well, I mean, obviously it's something you look back on and you're like, man, you know, it, it was a tough loss. But it's March now, you know, and that's something that, that we've taken pride in here in this program is the energy gets uh, uh, turned up. My, my intensity gets turned up. And our practices, it's like, it's like I say, if the last few days, if I coach like that the entire year, I might not have, have, have anybody on the team. 
You know, times have changed. You, you, you can't just go at them, go at them the entire season. You know, so I, we work really hard on building relationships with all of the, the young ladies so they know basketball is basketball. But off the court, I'm going to treat them like they're my own kids. And I can promise you my own kids don't like me all the time. It's called parenting, you know. So the intensity is turned up. I told the, the, this one here after our home finale that if she didn't practice with a purpose and <laughs> energy on Tuesday and Wednesday, she was not getting on the airplane to come here because I wasn't going to coach that crap because her performance and effort was <laughs> Bad's an understatement, okay? But that's, see, what the, the difference is, we have, I have relationships where when I screw up, le, uh, le, le, last year here at this tournament, I screwed up. I subbed too early. It's my fault. It went on the kids. It was on me. And I'll admit it. I got no problem admitting it. But we're going to hold each other accountable as players and coaches. And when you can do that, it's amazing what can get done. So I'm, I'm just very appreciative of all of them. It, 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 it was a fun three days of practice, and then we, we played like we practiced. Here in the third row. Uh, Gabe, you remember her hoop stats? This is for all three of you guys. I thought your ball pressure and ball denial was just incredible today. How does that get you guys going on the defensive end? Uh, yeah, for us personally, I think we play our best basketball in transition. So us just being aggressive, starting the game out hot, um, yeah, I think it really just set the tone for us. Yeah, same thing Mikasa said. Um, I think just being aggressive from the start um, really set the tone for us, and we just kept it going throughout um, all four quarters. Coach. Oh, I, I thought they answered perfect. All three. You were perfect. Every, everything they said, <laughs> it's ditto. <laughs> just just make me sound smarter. <laughs> <laughs> Over here on the left. And it's don't put row. my stutter right first. <laughs> Not the stutter. <laughs> Hey, so you mentioned this being the, the com most complete game of the season that you guys have had so far, knowing you know, some of those inconsistencies with maybe letting up in the third quarter or things like that. How rewarding was it to see that you know, they really stepped up today and didn't uh, you know, let those little lulls kick in? No, it was great. I mean, except for that little stretch there in the second quarter, the way we came out in that third quarter is exactly the way you have to play. I mean, we scored on the first play. It wasn't perfect. It's not like it came off the first option. Uh, but Costa made a great pass to O, and those are the shots that I talk to Olivia about all the time. When she can make that free throw line jump shot, then it changes everything for her because now she's got a pretty quick first step. She can get to the rim, but it, if they don't guard you up there, then it, it's harder to score. And, and I thought when that, when that one went in to start the half, the second half, I was like, okay, this is going to be a good sign, and it was. All right, here on the front row. Let's go. Skip Foreman with the uh, Winston-Salem Journal. Coach, I, I missed the name, but who did you say you assigned to Jules Spear? Mikasa. Mikasa. What was your personal strategy in stopping Spear? Because yesterday she went 0 for 8 and then caught fire in the second half. Today she was somewhere in that range but never got that <clears throat> spark. Talk about how you approached covering her and – how it came out? Uh, really, uh, just playing hard. I'm going to be physical. I'm going to be aggressive. But I think the biggest thing was just that I knew my teammates had my back. Uh, we communicated. We talked through the whole the whole game, through screens, through back doors, back cuts. So just knowing I could rely on my teammates. Here on the second row. Mikasa, for you knowing what happened, you know, last time, last year in the first round, and then also the last time you played Wake Forest, how motivated were you guys to make sure that, you know, neither of those two losses would happen again? Uh, yeah, we definitely came in like – okay, we don't want that to happen again. So I think just the mentality, we've, we've been waiting for a game like this all year just to put it all together. So it's exciting to see that it happened for us and I'm ready for it to carry over. Anybody else? All right, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, guys.